Quibi seeks to differentiate itself by offering entertainment design for the mobile phone. These are short, 10-minute episodes, there are reality shows or movies told in chapters, and it harnesses a new technology which Quibi has patented called Turnstyle, which takes advantage of the iPhone screen and displays the video both horizontally and vertically. Quibi was actually the brainchild of Jeffrey Katzenberg, a Hollywood mogul. Katzenberg was thinking of a service that would fill those so-called in-between moments. And he recruited Meg Whitman, who is well known in Silicon Valley for her prowess as a business executive. Jeffrey, who's been a good friend of mine for many years, literally picked up the phone and he called, so what are you doing? And I said, you know, I don't know. I'm the incoming chairman of Teach for America. I probably will do stuff with my husband and travel. And he goes, no, what are you doing tonight? And I said, knowing you, Jeffrey, I'm having dinner with you. He got on a plane and flew up to Palo Alto. Meg Whitman has spent an entire career working at consumer-facing brands. She's worked uh, earlier in her career at the Walt Disney Company. She worked for Procter & Gamble. She worked for Hasbro. And she has a really refined sense of how to develop products with an awareness of the consumer. There are plenty of skeptics about Quibi. Rolling Stone had a scathing review under the headline, Meet Quibi, the short form streaming network no one needs right now. There are others who say um, the world is filled with short form video. You know, Jeffrey Katzenberg and CEO Meg Whitman acknowledge that this is a service that is faced with skeptics. Well, I think whenever you do something that's new, like right. eBay was, there's always skeptics. Whenever you do something that's really hard, and HP was very hard, there's always skeptics. So I don't mind a challenge. I like a challenge and mm -hmm. I don't mind skeptics. Quibi has managed to attract some of the top talent in Hollywood in part because it is so incredibly well financed. It's raised uh, $1.75 billion over the last couple of years. Basically, they have attracted everyone from Liam Neeson to Sophie Turner to Chance the Rapper, Idris Elba, but it has also given the creators of these new shows the rights to their creative work. So after a period of exclusivity on mobile devices, they can take their television show or their movie and stitch it back together and sell it for another platform. Now let's move to our second category. The service launched on Monday, April 6th, in a moment when decidedly the nation is not on the go. Everyone is in lockdown as we seek to try to curb the spread of the coronavirus. But uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg has argued that this may well be an opportune moment for consumers who are thirsting for some form of entertainment to, to sort of take their mind off of this more grim national news. All of life as we know it has just been turned upside down and inside out. And right at that moment in time, here comes something that's new, it's unique, it's different. As you know, the entire goal of our enterprise is to inform and entertain and inspire. Quibi is the service that Hollywood uh, insiders sort of love to hate. Some of the early reviews of Quibi's shows have not been glowing, much like Apple when it entered the world of entertainment with Apple TV Plus last year. In the case of Quibi, there is a, a similar sort of uh, blowback. Despite some pretty acid reviews of the entertainment, I think Quibi actually has a chance. I found it actually refreshingly interesting, and it seems like there's something for everyone. We'll see whether these shows do connect with consumers, however.